YouTube frogs, welcome back to an updated complete guide, this time covering the return of our favorite sneezing cryo dancer, Eula. As usual, we'll be taking a look at 3 star, 4 star, 5 star weapon choices, going over her talents and simplifying her burst stack rotations, constellations, artifact choices, team compositions, providing a showcase of her in the abyss. Footage in most of this video was taken when I had C0 Eula back when she first came out in May of 2021. You may notice differences in the abyss monsters and attack rotation difference in the weapon testing. However, the core of the guide remains intact. This recording is fresh and I'll be able to cover everything you need to know in a shorter amount of time. This video will aim to condense two existing videos I already have on Eula, my first complete guide and a mastering attack combos into one while also including additional weapons or synergies since then. And as a reminder, I stream nearly every day on Twitch, so feel free to check out the community and the vibes. Link in the description. All right, let's begin. Timestamps are provided for your convenience. But before we get into the video, I want to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, Dungeon Fighter Online or DFO. DFO is a free to play MMORPG with fast paced gameplay and extremely pleasing retro graphic style. DFO has tons of new updates and events currently happening, so there's no better time to start playing. And right now you can embark on your journey with a free Dragon Warrior companion until December 21st using this coupon code. With over 16 diverse characters, all branching out into four or more unique advancement classes, there will definitely be a playstyle that suits you. I recommend the brand new female Slayer character advancement, Spectre. Fueled by Vengeance, the Spectre uses her blade in a combination of fast sword strikes and specialized wires to defeat enemies with ease. There's a special level up event happening right now called Song of the Spectre, specifically for this character advancement. You can farm for EXP and equipment in a special area and easily level up your Spectre to max level and even unlock the best and rarest gear in the game, Mythic Gear. Even if you're new to DFO, you can easily get into the swing of things with the Newbies Always Welcome event. This event is perfect for newcomers and provides players an opportunity to team up with veteran players in various dungeons and raids to get rewarded generously, even while at the start of your adventure. Use my link in the description below to join over 700 million players worldwide in Dungeon Fighter Online. Now, let's get back into the video. Just in case you wanted to see how my Eula is, this is a pretty well-invested Eula. For 2.3 snapshot, she's level 90 out of 90, constellation 6, and level 6, 9, 12 talents. Back in May though, for which most of the testing was done, she was a standard level 80 out of 80, constellation 0, and level 6 talents. So what you guys will be seeing for most of the weapons is C0 Eula damage. To include the new weapons, 4 star Akumaru and the 4 star Luxurious Sea Lord into the picture, which are the two new unique claymores introduced post Inazuma, we'll do a special test for them with my C6 Eula in comparison to Skyrider and Serpent Spine. Artifacts wise, the set bonus has not changed. I still prefer running 2 Bloodstain and 2 Pale Flame for the universal 50% physical damage bonus. These artifacts are slightly different than the ones that I had in the C0 showcase, but I'm still running the standard attack percent, physical damage, and crit rate. Alright, let's dive into her talents. So, Eula is one of those characters where all of her talents, including normal attack, matter. As a burst focused DPS that does primarily physical damage, over 80% of her practical damage output is physical and can come from her burst. In practice though, depending on the situation, getting full value from her burst can be difficult, with enemies moving out of range or enemies dying to her normal attacks before the burst sword pops. So let's begin in the order that makes most sense. Normal attack. These are standard claimer multipliers with an elegant attack string fit for a dancer. Her entire attack string is pretty fluid, with the most important multiplier being N4. So N4 is the attack where a claymore ends behind her back, and then N5 would be the transition into the flip. So N1 to 5 is used pretty commonly, so for the most part, don't worry about the pretty finesse cancels. We'll discuss different rotations in the playstyle section. Small note that after N4, there is a slight delay, and it can be canceled with her elemental skill, same with the N5, which is the last two hits. Alright, so elemental skill. So this is a fairly complex ability on paper with all of these multipliers, but it's actually pretty simple to understand. So there's two forms to it. There's a press and a hold. Press grants one stack of what's called Grimheart. This Grimheart is shown above Eula in a kind of dual sword emblem fashion. This Grimheart stuff increases her defense and resistance to interruption. Hold skill consumes those stacks, deals additional cryo damage, and importantly, reduces both physical and cryo resistance of nearby enemies for 7 seconds, the duration of her burst. This goes on a 10 second cooldown if the hold version is used, press is 4 seconds. So don't think about this ability too much. In the simplest playstyle, just tap when you're not in the burst and then hold when in the burst. More complex rotations to follow. Alright, so burst, this is the big nuke. You activate it and a crystalline sword appears to the left of her. 7 seconds to use normal attacks and her elemental skill to charge it. The more stacks, the bigger damage from the explosion. So up to 30 stacks can be gained, but this is only achievable with C6 and good RNG on stack generation. At Constellation 0, expect 12 stacks with optimal play. 
This ability is on a 20 second cooldown with any energy cost, making it fairly expensive to rotate. However, this is one of the largest single hit nukes in the game. Currently, mine is level 12, and taking a 12 stack burst would deal 2,945% AoE damage in one hit. If hypothetically I were to get a 30 stack burst at level 12, it would deal 6,082% damage in one hit. That's kind of high. All right, on to passive. So Ascension 1 passive. Translation of this is if you do two press skills and gain two stacks, and then you press the hold skill, a mini version of her burst sword explodes immediately, dealing 50% of the base damage of her burst. So take your burst and the lightfall sword base damage here, half it, and that's how much the Ascension 1 passive would do. For my level 12 burst, this passive would deal an additional 426% multiplier damage in physical form. Ascension 4, when casting her burst, gains one Grim Heart stack automatically, and her elemental skill refreshes cooldown. With this ability, you can skill into burst, and then from zero stacks, you'd be gaining two. One from the skill, and one from the Ascension 4 when you cast your burst. And then you can hold skill right after that for the resistance shred. So this passive allows for a super simple, no thought rotation playstyle, beneficial if you don't want to get too crazy with Eula mechanics. All right, so talent priority wise should be fairly evident, identical to the prep video. Aim for your burst first, and then your normal attack, and then the skill. So she's a very burst heavy character with high hitting normal attack damage. Her elemental skills only meaningful gain lies in the physical and trial resistance decrease, only gains 1% per level. Burst and normal attack are worth investing to level eight or higher. For the strongest nuke potential and damage per screenshot build, maximize investment into burst and an elemental skill for that juicy 1% per level resistance decrease, because at that point, everything matters. Okay, so under the difficult part of Eula's guide, how to play her and maximize her stacks within her burst. Now, if you want a whole video dedicated to the testing and science behind this, please check out my Mastering Eula video. It's still relevant and captures the most difficult aspect of her rotations. Link in the description. Now in this video, I want to include multiple standard playstyles because everyone has their own preferences of how much time and effort they're willing to invest. Some just want a super standard, easy to execute rotation. Some want the most difficult to test out their execution and finesse. So let's start with the most simple. Elemental skill, into burst, into holding skill, and then just spam your normal attacks until the burst pops. This is the rotation that I would view as the easiest and least difficult rotation to execute while granting about 10 to 11 stacks. If you just want to try her out and don't want to bust your brains learning her rotations, this one will do just fine. Next up in the difficulty ladder. Elemental skill into burst, into a WASD cancel, into N4, into hold skill, into N4, and then the burst pops. So what this involves first is a WASD cancel. This is not dash canceling. It's simply spam tapping one of your directional keys, WASD, during the Q animation to cancel the end lag and initiate your character to start walking and normal attack as soon as possible. It's a slight like fraction of a second help. So after that, N4 into hold skill into N4. This one averages about 12 to 13 stacks of damage with N4 providing five, hold E providing four stacks, but overlapping with the second N4 to provide an average of 12 to 13. And then finally, the last combo, which reduces the average number of stacks on her burst, but achieves a hold skill before activating her burst to increase the damage of all her normal attacks in between. In a real practical fight where you can swap in Eula for multiple press skills before activating her burst, this will output the most damage. So skill times two, and then hold skill, and then you start your burst rotation. You skill again right afterwards, you do your entire N5 sequence, and then you hold skill, and then the burst pops. So this is on average 12 stacks of the burst, but you can see the hold skill is done twice in this run, one right before the burst activation and one right before the burst pops. This consistently applies the resistance shred and applies two stack mini lightfall sword from her A1 for additional damage twice. All your normal attacks during the burst period are also res shredded damage. These three combinations are what I would consider optimized for all the previous testing since she first came out. I choose one of these three and they cater to however much effort you like to involve for Eula mechanics. So if you do have Broken Pines and or Gene C2, then you're probably wondering, how do I incorporate attack speed into her build? So in this particular case, I'd focus on the N4 combo, which is the second I mentioned, or the N5 combo, the last one I mentioned, and extend their normal attack sequences beyond what is specified for the stack gain. So in the N5 combo, it does end with a hold skill. So if you have additional attack speed there, just proc more normal attacks until the burst pops. In this demonstration here, 23% attack speed was able to get me 14 stacks with a specific rotation. Skill into burst, into N3, into hold skill, into N5, and then the burst pops. 
I wouldn't recommend this though. I just stick with extending the N5 combo that we mentioned previously. So a last reminder for the playstyle section. In the actual fights, you may not be able to get these perfect combinations off for maximum DPS. You may need to dash or get interrupted, etc. That's okay. Do what you can and impromptu her autos as best as possible. The more you practice these rotations, the easier the muscle memory and easier for you to pull off whatever moves you need in actual combat to gain the most damage. Good luck. Okay, on to weapons. So the footage you'll be seeing demonstrating these weapons was taken when she first came out. Still perfectly relevant, just updated explanations and visuals. So here's what we have on our roster. 3-star debate club. It's the strongest of all claimers in the game, should be no surprise. Besides, of course, the WGS. Not to be confused with the super weak Wolf's Gravestone, but in fact, the super godly Waster Greatsword. Memes aside, 3-star Skyrider Greatsword. Very strong on budget F2P option. I've, I think I've said my part in multiple videos on this weapon. 4-star weapons. So the old tests go through a plethora of weapons, so I'll just list them out here and we can discuss the relevant ones later. We test a Sacrificial Greatsword, Pavonius Greatsword, Prototype Archaic, Snow Tomb Star Silver, Black Cliff Slasher, Serpent Spine, Lithic Blade, and we can't forget about what I leveled back then, the Bell R5. Additionally, for the Foresight side, we'll slot in the Akomaru and the Luxurious Sea Lord later. For our 5-star weapons, we have Scoured Pride, Wolf's Gravestone, Broken Pines, and we'll talk about the Unforged at R180. So we know that the Unforged is identical to Wolf's Gravestone except for a more selfish shield-based passive. You can see between R180 Unforged and Gravestone, same base attack, same attack percent. This attack percent is up to 20% with the 5 stacks, and Wolf's Gravestone is 20% attack. This one doubles with the shield, this one gains 40% if you hit an opponent with less than 30% HP. So they're basically identical weapons, I don't need to retest this. But for the Akomaru and the Luxurious Sea Lord, we'll need to switch up comparisons a little bit to add those in. For the old footage, the artifacts used are shown here. When we get to the new weapons, I'll go over the small testing changes and we'll be using slightly better artifacts that you can see here. I give my stats about 80 to 174. So keep in mind, for these demonstrations, the old footage goes over zero stack and roughly 12 stack demos. Those are the most important numbers to compare between each weapon. All right, starting off with three-star weapons. We have the debate club start off here. This is the strongest option in the game just behind Waster Greatsword. Nothing else needs to be said. Next up, Skyrider Greatsword, super solid budget F2P option, perfectly synergistic with Eula. Passive will be active on this weapon. Alright, so to start for these 3-star weapons, uh, I wouldn't recommend Debate Club, obviously because Skyrider is much better. Skyrider Greatsword is actually a really excellent option for early to mid-game players starting out. You can't go wrong, and only a few 4-star weapons actually outscale it. Alright, 4-star weapons. So we have a bunch that I tested previously, so I won't bore you with the unnecessary weapons to talk about. We may still show the demos of all the relevant claymores, but I'll just briefly intro the less relevant ones. The Energy Recharge Weapons, Sacrificial and Pavonius Greatsword. Wouldn't recommend either of these choices, even though I've said multiple times how strong Pavonius are. They just aren't worth it for Eula specifically. Here's a demo though if we do include it.
Now onto the more DPS based weapons. So I'm just going to list them off again and you guys will be able to see the demonstration for each one. We have Prototype Archaic, Snow Tomb Star Silver, Blacklift, Serpent Spine, Lithic Blade, and of course the Bell. In no particular order, these will be shown in. You guys will be paying attention to the numbers post showcase. We'll get into Luxurious Sea Lord and the Aquamaro uh, later. <laughs> Those are the four star weapons. Though most of them perform relatively decently, we can see that the Skyrider's Greatsword outperforms nearly all of them, with the exception of the Serpent Spine. However, this is not to take away from the general strength of attack or crit weapons that you've already invested in. Any of the ones that we showcased, if the damage difference is not that great, don't worry about it. As a craftable, the Snow Tombed Star Silver performs rather well. It's nearly identical to the Skyrider Greatsword and there's no real downside to either of them. If this weapon though had a more relevant passive than what this is, it would probably overtake the 3 star weapon. And of course, Serpent Spine ekes out on top at just R1. If you can maintain the passive stacks, especially with shielding, which she wants anyway, and this unique crit rate claymore, which currently is the only one that gives crit rate, proves to be really solid to build around. Now, here's how Aquamaro and Luxurious Sea Lord look for just burst comparison. Since my Eula is Constellation 6, the only way to maintain equal stacks and demonstrate damage differences is to activate my burst and immediately pop it for the 5 stacks. If I do any additional auto attacks, it's all RNG based, which I don't want. So, for these weapons, that's what we'll do. Here's how all those weapons look for a base 5 stack C6 burst damage Eula. We'll also be including the Skyrider Greatsword and Serpent Spine for relative comparison. Okay, so we have our base comparisons of Skyrider Greatsword with Passive and Serpent Spine. We know that roughly, Skyrider Greatsword holds its own, and Serpent Spine is a stronger version of it. In this particular case, Skyrider Greatsword did 80,000 damage, Serpent Spine did 90k, Sea Lord 94k, but at R590, which is 10 levels higher than the other weapons, and then over 100k for the Akumaro with the Riding Comp, which is a very high energy cost comp. So even though the Luxurious Sea Lord did output more damage than the Serpent Spine, my Fish Claymore, again, is level 90, R5, and my Serpent is just R180. So they are not on equal fitting, and the Serpent Spine is definitely stronger if it were at equal level and refinement. However, the Fish Claymore for Eula is not that bad. 
definitely a usable claymore. And then, to no surprise, running the Aquamara with the Raiden team comp breaks 100k and it keeps all other options at a 5 stack burst. So I would only recommend using this weapon if you're running the Raiden Shogun composition for maximum output. And also, this weapon does not benefit your normal attacks, they are going to be weaker than compared to the Serpent Spine. I think that both of these new Claymore additions improving burst damage are definitely viable on Eula. Alright, on to 5 star weapons. So we first have the Skyward Pride and Wolf's Gravestone at R580. I can't retake the footage here with R1 Wolf's Gravestone and an R1 Skyward Pride because my current Eula is already C6 and the stack generation is additional RNG based. So reminder again, for the Skyward Pride, do not overlook its passive damage. These vacuum blades do a crap ton. And for the Unforged, you can imagine it as a slightly stronger than Wolf's Gravestone without the 40 to 80% damage proc. Identical base attack and secondary stat, just a minor change to the passive. Okay, finally, Broken Pines. This is her signature weapon and always a go-to for her. So, for the 5 star weapons, it's pretty easy to see that all of them pack a huge punch in their own way. Skyward Pride may not have the biggest numbers, but the amount of numbers that are on the field and also the passive blades account for 65,000 damage and the weapon provides additional recharge for her which is immensely valuable for her burst looping. Unforged and Wolf's Greystone are standard attack based weapons. Unforged for shield comps, Wolf's Greystone otherwise and for a team buff. If you take the R5 Wolf's Greystone damage that you see, and you increase it by 8%, that's what the Unforged at R580 would be with his shield. But if they're compared equally, then they're identical strength to the T. No shield Unforged and no proc Wolf's Greystone. And then obviously, Broken Pines with the highest base attack in the game, use it if you have it. Attack percent by standard and also attack percent more from after the Sigil's proc and additional attack speed boost, which is a unique buff on Claymore weapons. Artifacts. Alright, this is going to be highly overlapping with the rerun prep. If you watch that video, you can skip this part. Just run 2-piece Bloodstain and 2-piece Pill Flame. For those new here though, let's go over the details. So, for Eula's artifacts, they follow the standard for physical DPS. Prioritize a mixture of 2-piece Pale Flame and Bloodstain for the universal 50% physical damage increase. 4-piece Pale Flame is also excellent on Eula, granting up to 18% attack and 50% physical damage bonus from the 4-piece bonus, but the uptime is not nearly as effective as Pale Flame Bloodstain, especially if you have less than C2 Eula, where her hold elemental skill goes on a 10 second cooldown and can't refresh the 4-piece bonus. In most situations, I would recommend the Pale Flame Bloodstain combo over 4-piece Pale Flame, unless you have C2+, and you seriously got RNG carried by Pale Flame artifacts. Now, 2-piece Noblesse and 2-piece Bloodstain is also a great alternative, especially since both of those artifacts are from the same dungeon. 4-piece Emblem set also works for a pure burst damage based Eula and provides her a little extra 20% recharge. However, the damage from 4-piece Emblem at 120 recharge is only 30% burst damage, which is less than 50% physical and does not assist her normal attacks. Otherwise, the attack percent pieces Gladiator and Shimanawa fit anywhere as a 2-piece set. I would try to stay away from 4-piece Bolide or 4-piece Gladiator as those set bonuses do not benefit her burst damage. For newer players, grab the best combo of attack and crit that you can. 2-piece Braveheart, Sojourner, and Berserk or work well. So, main stat pieces should be fairly straightforward. Attack percent, attack percent timepiece, physical goblin, and crit rate or crit damage mask. So, I would only do a crit damage mask for Eula if you can maintain 60 or 70 crit rate with a weapon like Serpent Spine, and if you want to go for damage per screenshot builds. 
For consistency though, I'd really recommend crit rate for her here because when her burst pop doesn't crit, she loses so much damage output. And finally, attack percent cuff is a possible option, but it's much worse than physical damage. Since the physical damage cuff grants 58.3% physical damage bonus, which is different than the usual 46% from attack percent or the usual other elemental damage bonuses. So automatically not using a physical damage cup here loses 12% in stats. Definitely try to prioritize physical damage bonus here for the 58%. All right, time for her constellations. Constellation one, after you hold your elemental skill, 30% physical damage increase for six to 18 seconds, depending on her Grimheart stacks. View this as a standard 15 to 20% DPS increase. The uptime is maximum 90% of this physical damage buff with perfect rotations without constellation two. Constellation two, Holding your elemental skill cooldown drops from 10 seconds to 4 seconds. So this is a really solid one for energy gain since more skill spam. Pale Flame uptime also is basically 100% if you're running 4 piece. And the ability to run the N5 combo playstyle post burst pop efficiently. And the ability to run the N5 combo playstyle post burst pop, which is the last rotation that we demonstrated in the playstyle section with maximum efficiency. Constellation 3, this is a standard plus 3 levels to her burst damage. This is a plus 20% multiplier gain, 67% per level. Constellation 4, her burst sword damage and Ascension 1 passive gain 25% damage to less than 50% enemies. This one is mostly for screenshot builds because usually enemies below 50% are going to die to her burst without this constellation anyway. I mean, if you're C4, you're probably going off anyway. Constellation 5, Plus three levels to the skill, only here for that 1% per level physical cryo res shred. That's literally it from C5. The damage increase from this constellation is not noticeable. And then C6. So as I mentioned in the prep video, this is one of the strongest damage increases from C5 to C6 in the game. Her burst damage starts at almost double the multiplier due to the defy stack start here. And every hit or elemental skill has a 50-50 RNG hit to gain an additional stack just like pulling the character banner, yeah? So this equates to nearly a 70 to 100% damage boost to her burst. And it's also the only way that her burst can actually hit the 30 stack cap. So with C6, Yula's burst can reach the highest possible screenshot damage in the game with a crowned buffing setup, gets you a Tony Toe and friends six to seven million damage screenshot on floor seven. Team building. So Yula is looking for several things of benefit here. An energy battery to assist with her 80 cost burst, an Electro for Superconduct, maybe Double Crown for Resonance and the Crit Rate buff, Shielding to resist Interruption maybe. And uh, one thing that I didn't mention in the prep video is maximizing her Crit Rate so her Burst damage doesn't flop. Since her Burst is focused on a singular source of damage, if it doesn't crit, she's losing like a huge fraction of her damage. So post Inazuma, we have the Raiden Shogun, which if she's not on one of your main Abyss comps already, here's a perfect slot for her. So Raiden Shogun doubles as a Superconductor, Rotational DPS when Yula is on cooldown, an energy refunder for the entire team, not just her and herself, and a burst damage increaser with her elemental skill. We didn't have Raiden Shogun on her first release, so we'd have to build compositions like Double Cryo or Double Electro, which don't get me wrong, are still super strong. I'll actually be demonstrating one of those for my old footage. Besides the staple Yula Raiden comp though, Diona has been a staple battery that synergizes very well with Yula. With Favonius or Sacrificial Bell, Diana provides that much needed energy, shielding, healing, and double cry resonance for the team. You can even slot in a third, for example, Rosaria for additional crit rate transfer, triple cryo. So Diona plus Rosaria plus an Electro is a solid budget comp focusing on maximizing Eula's burst uptime with three cryo units and ensuring her burst crits on top of the Superconduct debuff. So we get double cry resonance crit rate and also Rosaria to transfer more crit rate to Eula. So another well-known composition, double Geo Eula plus a Superconductor. Slap in a Jolly Physical Resistance Shred Jade Shield with another Geo, Resonance, and then Electro for the Superconduct. This one focuses on survivability with no healing and with maximum Fizz Shred and sub DPS from supports. Now the double Geo here is not super necessary. You can also opt out of the second Geo and then put in someone like Bennett for further increased attack transfer. So other great generic team additions for Eula, double Electro for the extra energy gain, any form of double Cryo if not running Diona, non-C6 Bennett for the attack transfer, Crit Rosaria for the crit transfer, and then specific nuke based compositions that may include Xing Yan, C2 Kli, Mona, Bennett, etc. This should be the same information as the prep video. All right, let's showcase some compositions and take a trip down memory lane. These showcases were done six months ago on her first banner with the laziest of playstyles, skill into burst into hold skill and then auto spam. What you'll be seeing is C0 showcases and then one showcase now with the C6 Yula plus Raiden 
in the current abyss. So the CZR showcases are on a different abyss from way back when. And you know what? For that C6 Yula and Raiden showcase, let's use Fish Claymore. Cue the music, Mr. Goat. And with the showcase complete, that about wraps with the core of this guy. With one of the strongest burst damage nukes and physical damage queen, Yula excels at skipping phases of bosses with careful preparation for extremely high burst damage. Even enemies with high physical resist stand no chance against her composition shredding power. If this guy helped you understand Yula a little better, consider liking the video and subscribing to the YouTube channel for more similar content. It's free and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I wish that everyone's still trying to pull Yula the best of luck. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.